What's good gamers? Welcome back to the comment section or welcome for the first time. I've never done a video like this, but in this video, I'm going through your comments on my latest video of Zero Hype. There's been a number of really good comments. I've chosen some of the comments that got the most likes, also some of the comments that call me out on things, some of the comments where I could have done a better job explaining things. So yeah, this really is to give more insight into your comments and being able to respond to them in a way that I think they deserve. So often, so many of the really good ideas come from you guys in the comment section, and it's sad that there's not a better way to really incorporate those into the mainstream so everyone can see it. Before we get going, though, I want you to imagine a scenario, and we're going to get back to this at the end of the video, but for now, I want to ask you, I want to sketch a scenario, and then I want to ask you a question about this scenario. Tomorrow morning, we all wake up and Ian Azikostas and the team have put out a new video. They have announced patch 10.1.7.5. This is a 0.5 patch that is unique insofar as it adds absolutely nothing to the game. In fact, it only removes things from the game. As of next week, there will be no more gear upgrades in World of Warcraft. All content will scale relevant to its difficulty to ensure that everyone participates on an equal footing and you are only rewarded for your skill and your teamwork. So it's done to ensure more competition and more fairly you can no longer outgear any content because there is no gear. The way it works is at the beginning when you log into the game you get a choice of 50 costumes or outfits. You can change the patterns, the colors, so really make yourself look unique, but there is nothing to unlock. There are no mounts in the game anymore. They've all been removed. Instead, you have an option of 10 or 20 or 50 mounts uh, that you can choose from, but these are also not gathered from the outside world. They're just there. And Blizzard made the choice based on the most popular mounts used by people throughout World of Warcraft. There are no achievements and there is no pets. There's nothing. No rewards whatsoever in World of Warcraft. My question to you is, would you still be playing World of Warcraft, number one? And number two, what activities, if any, would you still be doing in World of Warcraft? Now, keep all of this in mind because... We will be revisiting it at the end of the video. Let's get into your comments, shall we? This comment from Mr. Lol Guy was the most liked comment on the video, so I felt compelled to include it here. And I want to be clear, I never in that video said that Dragonflight wasn't a massive step up from the previous expansions. I agree. I'm still playing Dragonflight to this day, and I still really enjoy it. The point of that video was to highlight potential future problems that will eventually sneak in. If you're continuously going to reuse the same blueprint for all of your content, eventually the same thing that happened with Battle for Azeroth and with Shadowlands, where finally, you know, people started to see how the cheese was made. People started to see the treadmill and the carrot for what it was. The game no longer did a great job of hiding the trade mole and the carrot. And once you see it, you really cannot unsee it. The point of that video was to say people are starting to see how the cheese is made because the content is monotonous and that really isn't helpful. I do not disagree with you at all. Dragonflight is a massive improvement over, well, what was not great in BFA and Shadowlands. Our next comment here comes from Zedman. Now, Zedman, thank you so much for the compliment, first and foremost. But I would argue the age thing, while yes, to some extent, may be relevant. I would also argue, given the success of games like Baldur's Gate 3, undoubtedly the success of Starfield, Cyberpunk 2077, and quite a few other games over the course of the last year. Hogwarts Legacy is another game that comes to mind. People were spending 10, 12, 16 hours a day playing that game because it was super fun. And I'm talking about people my age, right? I'm talking about people that started playing World of Warcraft back in vanilla. They still find that hype for other games, suggesting that it's not that we're all getting older and we can no longer get hype for video games. It's more a case of when you get older, you start to value your time a lot more. And so you will only get hype for something when it truly deserves that hype. You know, when you're young, you're going to live forever. Who cares, right? If I waste 20 hours on something mediocre or meta-based, who cares, right? I'm, I'm young, I'm gonna live forever. 
But as you grow older, you go, fuck, death is near. I, I should I should probably spend my time on something a little bit better. So I get that argument from people, but I don't think it holds water, especially considering the amount of time people spend playing other games when, you know, we used to play World of Warcraft in that exact same way. The other uh, thing that I want to point out here is you can't please everyone. And while technically you are correct, you're also wrong because... The whole point of an MMO is that it provides you the freedom to please absolutely everyone. There are no limitations to what you can do in an MMO. Single player games have inherent limitations. A single player game specifically is usually designed for a very specific audience. You choose what that audience will be before you even start making your game and it's only meant for that audience. So if anyone doesn't like that type of gameplay, they're not gonna like that game. Baldur's Gate 3 is another great example here. It is turn-based, it is a turn-based strategy CRPG. There are a ton, ton of people that don't like turn-based video games, so this game is genuinely just not made for them, and there's nothing the developers can do because this is the game mode that they chose, because this is the game mode that they want to play. And most don't have those inherent problems. You can pretty much do everything. The problem is when you try to do everything for everyone, but all of it boils down to the same things. In World of Warcraft, you have a world quest system always tied to some kind of collection system, always tied to some kind of event system, mostly the same thing, portal spawn, bosses that need to be killed, and then everything in the game it's about getting gear. In that scenario, yes, you can't please everyone. Not everyone is going to give a shit about the gear. And because gear is tied to everything in WoW, it creates inherent restrictions. There are things that you can't do. If you make it too hard, for example, players are going to complain because it's too hard to get the gear, but they need the gear. So yes, you are correct, but you're also wrong. It's literally Blizzard is causing their own howl by tying everything to gear and everything to the rewards that gear is supposed to bring. So the next comment from Kigo, Kago, not entirely sure if I'm saying your name correctly, but you're absolutely right. The big problem with dungeons, yes, it is that it will always require specific comps because different classes bring different things to the group. And when you have something like Mind Sooth, for example, it is gonna be such a valuable part of a run that you're almost required to have it. But this is why in the video I suggest that two paths of playing Mythic Plus. One that is timed and one that is not. I'm not trying to break the meta composition here. I'm not trying to say that, oh, Blizzard should do it in such a way that there is no meta comp. I'm trying to say that Blizzard should try to provide players with a way to play, even if they're not the meta comp. If you want to time a plus 20 key, you're gonna need a meta comp. But if you don't have a time limit and all you care about is having fun with your friends on a Saturday afternoon, then you can do a plus 20. Is it gonna take longer because you don't have exactly the right classes? Yes, it is. But it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you're not looking for that timed experience. You're not there to compete. You're there to have fun with your friends. And I think that takes care of all of it. There will never be a way to design dungeons so that every class can be viable within those dungeons. At best, you you can try in the eight dungeons that you offer to make every class relevant in at least one of those dungeons. And even there, I would say Blizzard doesn't really do a great job. There are dungeons, or at least right now, there are classes that are pretty much god comp in every dungeon regardless. And I would also think this might be a problem with just the sheer number of classes and specs we have in World of Warcraft, it's it's mathematically impossible to design the game so that every single dungeon, or that there is a dungeon in which every single class shines, which is also why my suggestion was change the way classes balance in World of Warcraft to ensure that you can actually balance the game in specific areas where people might be playing it rather than, you know, PvE being treated as a single thing which it isn't. Into Judas, I could not agree with you more even if I tried. Fact of the matter is, yes, there are so many cool systems. I want to run something by you guys. It's something I literally just thought about uh, as I was reading this comment from Into Judas. Imagine this as a feature. Mage Tower. But Mage Tower inspired by Torghast, inspired by the Brawler's Guild. A new updated mage tower is announced it has 150 floors each floor with a boss these are bosses from around world of warcraft whereas which is where the brawlers guild comes in you can find authors 
on one of these floors and he's going to present you with a specific set of issues that you have to uh, try to overcome in order to defeat him. It's only bosses. There are no mobs or anything to kill you. It's literally just a boss run for 150 floors. There's a talent tree. So every single floor you complete, you get X amount of experience that you can spend on this talent tree. This talent tree will make you significantly stronger. Gear is also neutralized at the at floor one and you have gear points for every floor that you complete that allows you to customize your gear outside the, the run so that every run you do, you get a little bit stronger thanks to these gear points that allow you to basically spend more on haste or spend more on intellect or strength or crit or whatever you want. You can decide where you want to allocate those gear points. And then every boss that you kill will drop a random selection of alterations or mutations that will change the way this is where the Torghast inspiration very heavily comes from that will change the way your class plays so this gives every single run a very unique flavor while yes you are permanently getting stronger the more runs you do every run will also be different because it's random which abilities will actually be empowered at the end of every boss some runs will be doomed from the start because you'll just get a bunch of really weak upgrades. Other runs will be godlike and you, this might actually be the one where you complete it. At the end of that, or maybe every 50 floors, you unlock something really cool like a mount or a pet, but it's no gear. There's literally no gear tied to the system. It's just that system. I think something like that would be really cool and would really go down very well with the WoW player base. And if you combine that with all the things that Dragonflight already offers for players to play with, I, I I just I can't see how many players can complain about that system, as long as, of course, it's not a game tied to gear and upgrading your gear. Nick, you are absolutely correct. And yes, freedom will mean that people will play less. But if the game was super fun, people would play because it's super fun. The fact that people are pretty much playing for two weeks at the start of every patch and then leaving suggests there is a fundamental lack of fun within the content. The only fun that can be found is in the rewards and we'll definitely get to, remember what I said at the beginning of the video, we're gonna get to this a little bit more at the end of the video. The fundamentals do stand. My point in this video was about hype, not necessarily about player numbers. While definitely player numbers are down and you can see that, I, I even showed the slides in the video and for those of you that want to watch it, it will be in the description down below. The numbers are going down slowly but surely as the expansion drags on. That's not the point. The point is the hype. In the past, you would actually see people incredibly excited to play the new patches. Now new patches are announced and the PTRs are pretty much empty. I, I kid you not. You go on the PTR and you're lucky if you see one or two people on the PTR, where in the past, the PTRs were full. People were actually excited for what was coming. And I'm not talking the past Shadowlands or the past BFA. The last time I did PTR was in Legion. And Legion's PTR was absolutely packed. Every single time the PTR was announced, it was like the game. In fact, it was probably fuller than the game at some points. So that's sort of what I'm referring to. I'm not, as it were, referring to player numbers. Neo Piano, you're comment perfectly sums up why that video needed to be made i don't mind that dream surges is a new feature i don't mind that time rifts was a new feature i don't even mind that zarala cavern was a new feature and a new way to gain gear and a new way to play the game what i mind is that that's been the case every single patch so far like your comment says here you also hope that there's more to 1017 suggesting that you do kind of mind the mini game. The mini game doesn't really install that sense of excitement that you would otherwise get. That's the point of that video, is to provide Blizzard with some opportunity to provide us with that something more. Brick Danger, thank you so much for the comment. I do want to say though, therein lies the rub. The fact that there are other games that's coming out that people are far more hyped to play suggests that WoW needs to catch up. And I'm not suggesting that WoW needs to be this, it's the only game you'll ever play because it keeps you busy, busy the whole time. We tried that in BFA and Shadowlands and it was a miserable experience for the vast majority of the player base. So much so that a lot of them quit and they've not yet come back. What I'm suggesting is is if you are opting out of WoW because you're having more fun in other games, WoW needs to do better. I 
played WoW for 16 hours a day back in Wrath. Not because I didn't play other games. I've always, I didn't start my gaming career with WoW. I started playing Baldur's Gate way back when I was like nine or some shit, right? So I started with plenty of other games before WoW and I always played other games, but WoW was so fun during Wrath of the Lich King that it was the only game I wanted to play. I, I had no other games I wanted to jump into. I wanted to play Wrath of the Lich King and I'm suggesting that Blizzard needs to chase that fun. It, it It's not good when players go, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't mind DF. DF is fun, but uh, these other games are far more fun. It suggests there are ways in which Blizzard can improve. And that really is the point of the video is, is to allow Blizzard or give Blizzard some pointers on where I think they could improve. Robert, very, very valid, but there is a reason why I didn't get into the story. Story is incredibly subjective and it really isn't something that people or most people care about. There's a very small niche of the WoW community that actually cares about the story and actually cares about the lore. The vast majority of people play World of Warcraft for the gameplay. They play World of Warcraft for Mythic Plus and for Raids and for all, the, all that jazz. So I didn't want to taint that video jumping into a topic that I think First and foremost, because of my niche, I, I would probably be able to do a full video on its own on, but also because making improvements to the lore will definitely be fun for us lore guys, but I don't think that it is going to break the bank. I don't think that's going to be the magical fix. Even if WoW ascended to BG3 levels of storytelling, I, I still don't think that, that along with the other more fundamental problems with WoW, that would make any fix. So that's why I didn't go into the story, because story is a nice to have, but you can make WoW work even if you removed most of the story. It, it would still work. Uh, just look at Classic, look at TVC, even in some cases Wrath. While yes, there's always been like an overarching story, the, the story was never really that important. It, it was more just meant to give some explanation for why you're going in and killing something. You, you can make WoW work with very sort of broad stroke lore, and it would still work. So that's why I didn't go too deep into the lore discussion. Archmage, you're right. I did miss a lot of things. The problem is if I included everything and I'm going to have your comment on the screen so that people can see it because I think you have a number of really good points. I will highlight a couple of things that I don't exactly agree with. Like, for example, there's no way you can have community interaction with some kind of sandbox uh, element to the game. Classic wasn't a sandbox experience. It was like literally World of Warcraft was one of the first theme park MMOs. They categorized and popularized that uh, that genre of MMO. And there was a ton of community interaction in Classic, TBC, and in Wrath. I don't agree that you can't have community interaction in a theme park MMO. I think you can, I just think you have to allow space for players to create their own fun, even though it isn't a sandbox. The problem right now in World of Warcraft is everything is so overly curated that there there is no space for players to actually create their own fun. When you think about things like the Iron Man challenge, you think about things like the hardcore challenge for classic, those things have been attempted in retail with literally zero success because at the end of the day wow is just to curate it there's no real reason to do any of that the fact that mobs scale up with you creates another sort of fluid system that really makes it difficult to get any of these challenges to really be meaningful so at the end of the day i do i do agree with a lot of your points but i did disagree specifically with that one I don't think that WoW needs to suddenly become a sandbox MMO. In fact, I am one of those people that prefer theme park MMOs. I'm not a huge fan of sandbox because sandbox tends to become trivial and a little bit boring, uh, for me at least, after a while. Now, Dawn and I did sort of hash it out in the comment section and we did come to an understanding. I think I did a really poor job of explaining what I meant in that section of the video. I wasn't suggesting that the classes should be completely revamped for every part of the content that you do or for every different type of content that you do. I was suggesting that the classes be scaled and balanced differently depending on the content that you do. A great example here would be 
Bladestorm. In Mythic Blast, you could have Bladestorm capped at say five targets and in raid you could have blade storm literally hit everything it hits based on the fact that it's two different types of content and raids are often not timed so it doesn't really matter that you have a warrior that can blade storm to their heart's content the point was to allow for blizzard to balance classes to where all classes become relevant in the type of content that they want to run and i used affliction warlocks as the example because affliction warlocks are a great example of a class that is completely busted in mythic plus no one wants to play it no one wants to take it because it just doesn't do enough damage fast enough in raids it's fine because the boss takes a long time to die and ads don't matter not really even though in raids mythic plus does do fine on ads especially if those ads stay al alive uh, long enough the problem with mythic plus is the ads don't stay alive long enough and mostly affliction becomes useless but if you could balance affliction primarily for mythic plus you could give them a lot more boost. So, for example, Agony could apply at max stacks in Mythic Plus, which immediately fixes a lot of their burst problem and a lot of their ramp problem and makes them a lot more viable. So you don't need to change the way the classes play. They play exactly the same. They're just balanced different based on the content that you want to do. I hope that explains it for anyone that may have listened to that portion of the video and be like, what the fuck? I'm not going to learn how to play my class three different ways because I want a PvP, I want a deep, uh, PvE, and I want a raid. I wasn't suggesting that. Your class will still play exactly the way it plays. It will just be balanced differently. Philip, no. <sighs> I'm sorry, I don't agree with you. The problems with World of Warcraft 1 as it were, will still exist in WoW 2 unless they can fix it in 1. And 1 is still fine. If they can fix this, the, the small issues that I and many other players have with it, it will be a great fucking game. You don't need a full reset on the game just in order to fix what? What is a reset going to fix? If this mentality from the developers is the mentality with which they design video games now, WoW 2 is going to suffer from the exact same problems, right? That's not going to go away. So it's much better to just stick with what we have. The world is already there just make it more playable so i definitely do not agree with your take there i don't think a wow 2 would solve anything sapphire i literally include your comment here because of the super thanks i really appreciate the box bro and i'm looking forward to it the emerald dream has always been a mysterious place and it's a place that i've wanted to go to for a really long time so i'm very excited for it and it is a bit of a wet dream because i've had so many speculations especially in legion about that place so yeah i'm i'm excited very much so all right so you remember what i said at the beginning of the video now i would like to say that if you're and i suspect based on some of the other groups in my community that i've asked this question the majority of you most likely said you would not be playing wow anymore and that is the problem i would suggest that you may actually be addicted to wow rather than playing it for fun. The point is, gambling isn't fun. There's nothing fun about walking up to a machine and pressing a little button. The little button isn't why people get addicted to gambling. They get addicted to the coins that fall out at the bottom of the machine to which the little button is attached. And that's really wow. If you listened to that 10.1.7.5 patch and thought, this is the worst thing ever, I will never play WoW again. Then you have to start asking yourself, why are you playing WoW now? Because I would suggest you're probably playing World of Warcraft because you need those rewards. Whenever you see those purple pixels drop, it triggers the serotonin functions of your brain, which in turn will trigger the dopamine functions of your brain. As you complete these lists, these trigger dopamine and serotonin as well. So it makes you feel good. It gets you addicted to the game, but it doesn't make you have fun. At least, not forever. The point of that question was that right now, World of Warcraft appears to be optimized to bring in the vast majority of players and get them hooked on the game. There is a fundamental problem and Blizzard is going to run into that the same way they did in BFA, the same way they did in Shadowlands, because what Blizzard is trying to do is they're competing with biology. You see, the problem with dopamine spikes, while very good in the short term, they have a fall off period. There's a point where people get so desensitized to the dopamine spike that they can no longer achieve that dopamine spike. This is why when you go into casinos, the jackpot is always higher. The lucky thing for casinos is they're literally playing alongside biology. People love shiny things. We love gold. We love coins. We love money. 
money is important to us. Games aren't the same thing. And at some point, you will run out of cooler and bigger rewards to get all of your players back into the grind. And once that happens, even that addicted player will eventually quit the game and shrug off their addiction because you weren't able to provide the dopamine spike that they had initially looked for or craved. I would argue that is a very bad way to try and design your game. I'm not saying that that shouldn't also be there because there are people that prefer to play that way, but there should be more ways for people to engage in the game. And if you can engage them where the content itself becomes the reward and the reward is simply the cherry on top, that goes a very long way. Now, I'm not suggesting that Blizzard should just remove all gear from the game. Gear is fine and having gear in the game is fine, but the content that finally gets you the gear should also be fun. Otherwise, what the hell is the point? If the content is mindless and the only thing you care about is the rewards, Blizzard will need to make those rewards better and better and better and better every single patch in order to keep you on that treadmill for longer and longer and longer. And eventually we run into problems like needing squishes, which we're probably going to need again soon because Blizzard said we'll never do squishes again because we have some internal technology now that allows us not to. But item levels have already gotten completely out of control. Damage is once again getting very, very high. Health pools are once again getting very, very high. So clearly it isn't working. And I would argue that's because of a fundamental disconnect with how World of Warcraft is designed in the first place. You can let me know in the comment section down below if you agree with it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And then, as always, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to me over on Patreon for $1 a month. You get to keep this channel absolutely sponsorship free. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, be kind to each other, be good to each other, and I will see all of you in the next one. Peace out, fam.